watching Morning Live. Thanks so much for tuning in. Now, the Marikana Tripartite Alliance Rally in the Northwest Province yesterday is viewed as a bid by the National Union of Mine Workers to reclaim its position as a majority union in the platinum sector. Now, Kosatu says that the rally was to address concerns about the ongoing killings in the area. NUM, which is a Kosatu affiliate, lost to AMCU when its members resigned in droves in 2012, and the two unions have since become rivals for membership in that sector. Now, AMCU rose to prominence during the labor unrest which led to the Marikana massacre, becoming the majority union in the platinum sector. Uh, Napoleon Webster, a community activist from Marikana, uh, was supposed to join us. We'll uh, seat him as soon as he does come through. We understand he's running late. But with me right now is David Van Veek, who's a researcher from Benchmarks Foundation, uh, to discuss this Tripartite Alliance rally in Marikana yesterday. David, good to see you once again. Thank you very much for having us. So let's just start with um, this particular rally so this is the first time mm. that noom has had mm. a rally mm. in marikana mm. since mm. the 2012 mm. massacre mm. Mm. your take on that well i think uh, the constitution guarantees people the freedom to associate um, and also to gather you know so i don't see any problem with num having a meeting there i also don't see any problem with contesting unions so long as the contestation itself uh, takes place in an orderly manner and there's no violence associated with it I don't see NUM having much of a chance of gaining re-entry into those mines simply because, um, you know, AMCO has just uh, secured an agreement with Sibanya of uh, an annual increase of 1,000 rands per month over the next year, or 5%, um, which means that the workers there will be probably fairly satisfied with what they have achieved um, in these negotiations that have just passed. Um, we are concerned that our monitors tell us that there are three people who have died over the over the last three months or so. We've had one on the 1st of November, a, a witness to that killing was also killed, and then the organizer of this rally was also killed last week, Sunday. Um, and, and that is disturbing. What is interesting is that NUM ascribes that to a syndicate and not to AMCO. Uh, which suggests that there are forces at work there which are trying to destabilize the situation, especially that Sabanya has announced that more than 5,200 workers will be retrenched uh, from that particular mine. It's not a very profitable mine. It wasn't profitable even before August 2012, um, if you look at shareholder reports for uh, Lonman at that time. you know, So basically Sabanya bought that mine more for the processing plant than for the mine itself. And it is uh, going to systematically scale down that operation because it's not profitable. But the problem is that when you retrench workers, you have fewer workers doing more work. And that's going to compromise mine health and safety. And Sabanya has a particularly poor record when it comes to mine health and safety, exactly because of retrenchments and getting fewer workers to do more work as it tries to drive productivity. So, so um, as the Benchmarks Foundation, you do a lot of research mm. in this particular mm. area. Mm. Do you think that those two issues uh, may become conflated, uh, the mm. issue of retrenchments mm. and uh, the issue of mm. mobilization on the one hand of unions? Well, I think that, I think that um, in the contestation for union membership, NUM might ascribe the loss of jobs to AMCO's poor leadership, which it's not, you know, and that might then create conflict between NUM and AMCO itself and that might lead to violence especially if there is a syndicate that is involved with this violence already as it is and so the situation there can become very volatile it is a very volatile area as it is and speaking to these deaths that have occurred, the three deaths, I was reading through that, the police, uh, there were reports of a beheading that took place of uh, one of the witnesses to that first murder. The police are seemingly saying they have no record or, uh, of a beheading. What are your monitors telling you about well, what's going well, on the there? monitors tell us that the killings definitely did happen. The problem, the problem is that the police, they are very ineffective. You know, part of the cause of the massacre in, in, in 2012 was the ineffectiveness of the police. If the police had arrested people as, as, as others were killed at the time, we would not have had the escalation that we had. You know, and so instead of shooting 34 workers at random at the end of that particular strike, the police should have arrested people as the process unfolded and that would have, uh, you know, that would have mitigated the situation and would have put the situation under control. Um, 
You know, one is worried about the ineffective, ineffectiveness of the police in these circumstances. And um, just looking at uh, Napoleon, who will join us, he, of mm. course, is a former mine worker, then mm. went on to mm. uh, join Forum for Service mm. Delivery, mm. Um, contesting a political mm. office mm. in that mm. area in Marikana. Mm. Mm. And, and, and basically, one of the things he said is that um, th th this is not a good move. And, and I want to address with him in more specific mm. terms when he comes mm. here, mm. his direct utterances. Mm. Mm. But, you know, essentially saying that that there seems to be no space anymore for the National Union of Mine Workers in that particular well, area. I, I think it's very dangerous for us as a constitutional democ democracy to say that contesting parties and unions and so on no longer have a space in a particular place. We should always have space for everybody if we are going to contest these things. Um, and obviously, it should be up to workers and it should be up to, uh, you know, members of the public to um, elect who, who they want to represent them and so on. I don't see that there will be problems for AMCO. And it's interesting that AMCO has not said anything about this particular uh, rally that took place. They were not threatened by it at all. You know, um, Mutunjo, who's a very outspoken uh, union leader, uh, well, said nothing about this. So I don't think that AMCO feels that this is a particular threat. We saw the um, Tripartite Alliance partners mm. come out mm. for this particular mm. rally. Um, significantly absent mm. was, of course, President Cyril mm. Ramaphosa, mm. and mm. we know his mm. history with uh, the Marikana massacre and uh, what mm. transpired there. Mm. So um, I think it was earlier in the year, the mm. president of Kosatu, uh, Zingi Swalosi, mm. she had indicated that they would be bringing the president, and mm. uh, we heard mm. that now apparently mm. they took too long to set mm. the date and the time for this, and this is why the president couldn't make it. What do you think of uh, the president making an appearance at Marikana? To what end would that be significant? Well, I think, first of all, our monitors tell us that the rally itself was not very successful yesterday, um, and I think that... Uh, that would have been an embarrassment for the president if he got there and it was not a very successful um, um, rally in its own right. Um, I think that um, it would serve no purpose to take the president there. You know, it, it, it would require a, a lot of groundwork by the political party concerns before they actually take someone as highly placed as the president there. You can't move into an area which uh, the wounds are still raw. People are complaining that the government has ignored them, you know, over the, over the period, over the seven-year period since the massacre. Now, um, if the president is to come there, it would have to be in a situation where groundwork has been done and where the issues have been addressed. I mean, even uh, BSAF, which is the biggest consumer of the platinum from that particular mine, is complaining that uh, PGM prices have gone up very dramatically. Uh, chrome and palladium and so on have gone up by 75%. The platinum group basket metals have gone up by 12%. Now, um, against that backdrop of now making increased profits in the platinum sector, one would expect the mining companies now to actually invest in communities and not repeat the period that preceded 2012, when they made massive profits between 2000 and 2009, uh, as much as 45% return on investment, and didn't invest anything in local communities or in the workforce. But we, we've had this conversation several times, mm. David. Mm. Um, what would be the incentive for them to change their behavior? Well, I think the incentive for them to change their behavior is to avoid the chaos that there was in 2012. And that chaos stretched all the way from the far western limb right through to, to, to Marikana. You know, it went like a, a wave after wave of strikes from 2009 onwards beyond uh, 2012. And surely we want as a country to, to, to establish a, a situation of greater stability uh, to the world outside, that we are actually managing the situation with regard to labor, with the situation with regard to the economy and so on, instead of having this chaos around uh, a leading industry uh, in, 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 in our economy. And, and, and just with regard to redress, and you touched on this earlier, mm. uh, post the mm. Marikana mm. massacre. Mm. So how are communities getting along after that? Well, I think that the communities there are quite, uh, you know, uh, concerned by the fact that the land question hasn't been addressed, the royalties question hasn't been addressed, the housing question, uh, although a lot of new housing has been built, it's been of very poor quality. It's cracking and falling apart. If you take camera crews there, you will see it. Um, and 
they are concerned that Lonman basically sold to Sabanya and they're not certain about what Sabanya is going to do and whether Sabanya is going to behave differently. As benchmarks, we've engaged with the CEO of Sabanya and he has made promises with regard to the community that Sabanya will behave differently from what Lon Lonman behaved before, but we have yet to see it. Uh, well, what sort of promises is he making? How are they going to behave well, differently? Well, he, he, he seems to be more open to uh, engaging with the communities to find out from them what it is that they actually do require. But there are so many things that are outstanding there. You know, the, the, there is the issue of the widows, there's the issue of the children, there, there's the issue of the uh, Vonerkop community itself and its land and the land claims uh, to that area. There's the issue of housing. Um, there's the issue of uh, corporate social investment and the matter of the social and labor plans of Lonman, which were never adhered to. You know, and one does not understand why the DMR does not actually insist that mining companies follow through on the social and labor plans on the basis of which they get their licenses. But really, you have some view on that because, and, and, and to be fair, mm. this is not peculiar to uh, Lonman who mm. have now sold to mm. Sibania Stillwater. Mm. Mm. It's not peculiar to them whereby mm. mining companies mm. seem to at will, um, you know, just mm. not adhere. Mm. Well, well, our advice to the president before the Farlem Commission was to have a commission of inquiry into mining as a whole, not just into the Marikana incident, and to look at re-engineering the entire industry, uh, to look at all issues, environmental, social, gender, and other issues as well, which, 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 which the industry is lagging behind the rest of the economy entirely as far as transformation is concerned. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the Farlem Commission's terms of reference was very, very restricted. And so uh, there was a golden opportunity there to intervene in the mining industry and actually transform that industry on the basis of what happened at Marikana, because the same thing can repeat itself elsewhere. So if we go to Marikana today, you mm. know, you spoke mm. about the housing mm. and you said mm. if you take a camera mm. crew mm. Um, and you mm. will see how the houses mm. that have been built mm. are mm. of a substandard mm. and, uh, quality, mm. Mm. If we went to Marikana in 2012 mm. or mm. 2011, 2010, mm. Mm. and we took a crew today, mm. apart from those houses, mm. what differences would we see? Well, I don't think that there has been much difference. You know, Lodman had a big uh, uh, hydrophonics uh, vegetable project there which entirely collapsed just before 2012. Uh, and they were very quick before the Farlem Commission to erase, erase any evidence of that particular project. Um, and there hasn't been any other projects that we that we can point to that has been done except for the housing, you know. And although the housing featured big in the Farlem Commission, uh, you know, it's a very impoverished area. The, the the local school took off the Lonman boards from the local school because they said the boards were actually lying to the public. The school actually contributed nothing to the community. And the community removed those boards because they said it created a false impression that Lonman was investing money in education in the area, uh, which they claim it didn't. So what's the way forward? Well, I think the way forward is for communities to become more organized, to be more mobilized around the issues, to be more aware of social and labor plans, to participate in those social and labor plans. It is also for the Department of Mineral Resources to do its work and to regulate. And this is, this is a point that we try to drive home all the time. We are speaking to the CEO of Sibanya. We are speaking to the CEO of Anglo-American. Uh, uh, Anglo we are speaking to uh, the big mining companies. We will be present at the mining in Daba and speaking to them there but as David. well. But the problem is that Government does not respond. But if there's a mining charter, mm. there is clear regulation mm. in mm. place. Mm. Mm. Why, why do we have to then go back and, and, and um, try to appeal to people's sensibilities to abide by the law? Well, I think two things. The mining charter is not uh, legally binding. You know, it is, it is, it is, uh, it is uh, to, it's a wish list, basically. Apart from which, I think that the mining charter is very weak. Um, it, is, it is not nearly strong enough. And uh, the fact is that you have um, four officials in the Department of Mineral Resources dealing with uh, social and labor plans nationally. So clearly, uh, there is uh, a lack of capacity. You can't have four people dealing with 
uh, so many mines. We are a very big mining con uh, country. And, 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 and these guys have to go through these social and labor plans and see if they are valid. So in the end, it just becomes a tick box approach by these four people, ticking, 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 ticking. There's no one on the ground to see that these things are actually happening. And this is where benchmarks and others come in and say, but we are here, we can see, we are speaking to the community. These promises that have been made are not being upheld. But then we need a response from the department. You know, we are actually doing their work for them. You know, and so they need to respond to what we are reporting to them. So um, uh, just before uh, we get to the news, uh, as indicated earlier, Napoleon Webster, community activist from Marikana, has now joined us. Thanks so much for coming through. And uh, Napoleon, uh, just to get into it, you actually said that this rally at the weekend that was organized by NUM and, of course, attended by all the Tripartite Alliance um, uh, affiliates, that that was an act of provocation. Why would you describe it as such? It is because uh, the community of Marikana rejected uh, uh, NUM and Kwasat for obvious reasons, exactly what uh, Mr. Van Veek has been saying. Um, uh, NUM uh, betrayed the workers and they could not uh, fight that uh, the social labor plan that loan men were supposed to implement should be implemented. They have been friendly to, to the mining companies and uh, they have not been helping. And uh, like uh, the issue of housing, they, they, they've never been vocal to an extent that uh, we believe that they were agitating that uh, the community must fight amongst themselves. Like you'll find that there's a housing scarcity. Uh, uh, the mine workers are still staying in shacks, and you know, uh, NUM was was never vocal for 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 the rights of the workers, and also not only workers within the community. Remember, there are small business people. You find big companies like Bidvest. There's still a heavy monopoly of mm. operations. But, but that's a very serious allegation, especially in a volatile area such as Marikana, where uh, David and I were just discussing there have been killings once again in the lead up to this particular rally. Um, if you make the sort of accusations that you are making against Noom, surely you must be able to back it up. It is true. I mean, it, it is very visible. They had to rent the crowd to come to Marikana. Uh, you know, the way we were so nice, because we understand these are the ordinary people. We did not want to fight the ordinary people. We want the bosses who are taking the decisions to, to bus, to run the crowd. There were a lot of buses which were coming as far as welcome. If these people were relevant, they wouldn't have to uh, bring the buses as far as welcome and, you know, far, far places to Marikana. They wanted to agitate uh, um, uh, uh, confusion so that they, we, we, we as the community start fighting them and uh, the whole but idea. Why? But why? They are simply exercising from uh, the look of it their constitutional right, freedom of movement, freedom of expression, freedom of congregation. Why don't they have a right to host a rally in Marikana? I never say they don't have a right to host a rally in Marikana. So why it's are you considering that they're not it as relevant agitation? In Marikana. They're not relevant in Marikana. But that doesn't matter. That, that doesn't preclude them it, it from does holding matter. a rally because there. Because it's opportunistic uh, 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 rally. They're trying to... Because they were forcing... They were, uh, the allegations that they were giving uh, people T-shirts and paying them for wearing those T-shirts. I mean, uh, they know that they're no longer relevant and uh, they, they are... Friend, they are friends to the mining companies. So now the mining companies are desperate because now um, the community is better educated. The, the community is aware that uh, um, uh, at some stage we need to hold the mining companies uh, uh, accountable. You see, Lone Men has run away. Uh, they had built three uh, sample houses. Mr. Van Veek has been very vocal about uh, those houses. They were supposed to have built 5,500 houses. And thanks to NUM and uh, the current sitting president, you see, why is uh, Lon Min running away during uh, 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 Cyril, Cyril Ramaphosa as a president uh, uh, tenor? 
Why are they running away now? It's because Cyril Ramaphosa is their friend. And now it's easy for them to just escape from their responsibilities. They're still owing us 5,500 houses. If NUM uh, is relevant to our community, why don't they make noise about uh, the social labor plan? Why don't they talk about the housing, which affects the mine workers? Why, why, why put a rally? where you are not relevant. They have lost the mm. relevancy. We are into news time, but I have to ask you, what do you know about the killings in the lead up to this rally? Um, having been accused of killing somebody and winning the case, I know it's a political agenda. ANC and NUM, they use the police to to, to divide us, to fight us. I spent almost a year in prison, and I won that case, uh, accused of murder. It is very easy. It's, it's what uh, the state and NUM uses against us as the community of Marikana. Because we know our rights, we know that uh, the mining companies, they have, they, ha they have responsibilities on improving our lives in Marikana. So uh, uh, people like uh, Van Veik, uh, they're, they're very helpful uh, in giving us information that resources us so that we can fight uh, the mining companies. Thank you so much to Napoleon Webster, community activist from Arikana, and David Van Veik, who is a researcher from Benchmarks Foundation. And we're discussing the Tripartite Alliance rally that was held in Marikana yesterday.